Votes for women! Votes for women! Votes for women! In 1912, I joined the women's suffrage movement, and things got pretty exciting. We started picketing the White House, demanding the right to vote. We were arrested, beaten, and clubbed into submission. Alice Kosu suffered a heart attack on account of the brutality, and Lucy Burns was left handcuffed, hanging by her arms in her cell all night long. The guards shoved narrow rubber tubes up our noses and poured in a disgusting mixture of raw eggs and milk. We couldn't get through it without vomiting. I can't begin to describe the pain and the humiliation. We did get a lot of press because of that. And President Wilson at last took notice. And in 1923, I decided to write the first Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution. And 49 years later, it reached Congress. <laughs> How long must women wait for liberty? Now it was time to go after everything else. You are so right, Gloria. It was 1967, and I was at my 15th college reunion at Smith College, and I decided not just to keep up with old friendships, but to conduct a survey to see how satisfied my classmates were with their current lives. And I discovered something. That housewife role, that we've all been shoved into mm. was stifling. There were no role models of working women with families. Mm. It was what I called the problem with no name. So in 1963, I wrote The Feminine Mystique. Yeah. yeah. In those notes was the outline for a new organization. We said, anybody who wants to join, pony up five bucks. And before you know it, five dollar bills were flying everywhere. Any woman <clears throat> who was doing a job for which a man would be paid more, stop. 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 Any woman pegged forever as an assistant when a man gets all the credit, stop. Stop.